Put a piece of white paper in front of the objective lens and focus the crosshairs with the telescope eyepiece. Now focus the image of the ranging rod using the focusing screw. Check for parallax by moving your head up and down. The crosshairs should not move against the image of the ranging rod. If they do, refocus the crosshairs and then refocus the image and check once more. Now that you have eliminated parallax, use the vertical slow motion screw and the lower plate slow motion screw to make the vertical hair of the diaphragm pass through the nail in the top of the reference object, in this case, station X. Don't bother to make the center of the crosshairs pass through the top of the nail. This wastes time. However, it is important that roughly the same part of the vertical hair is used each time an intersection is made. The intersection was done using the vertical slow motion screw together with the lower plate slow motion screw, so the horizontal reading has not altered. Turning the lower plate slow motion screw has no effect on the horizontal circle reading. Now take the horizontal circle reading. Turn the micrometer screw on the side until you get a coincidence with one of the horizontal circle scale divisions. Here, the reading is 0 degrees, 32 minutes, 40 seconds. It is obtained by adding the horizontal circle scale reading to the micrometer scale reading. Don't forget to check your reading and the booking you've made. In order to take the face left reading to station Y, rotate the telescope horizontally to the right. To do this, unclamp the upper plate, but don't unclamp the lower plate. Otherwise, your readings will not change. When you've sighted the ranging rod, clamp the upper plate and then use the vertical slow motion screw and the upper plate slow motion screw to line up the vertical hair on the diaphragm with the nail in the top of station Y. Check for parallax and then use the micrometer screw to take a reading. Book it down and check it as before. Now free the upper plate clamp and rotate the telescope to station Z. Exactly the same procedure now takes place in order to get the face left horizontal circle reading to station Z. The ranging rod is sighted and the vertical hair is lined up with the nail in the top of the station. Check for parallax. The micrometer screw is used to obtain a reading. That completes the procedure for taking face left readings. The next stage is to take face right readings. Free the vertical clamp on the telescope and transit it. Free the upper plate, rotate the telescope and line it up once more with station Z. Make sure you don't touch the lower plate slow motion screw or clamp. Now line up the vertical hair on the diaphragm with the nail in station Z. Check for parallax. Rotate the optical reading telescope and you are ready to take a reading using the micrometer screw in the same way you did before. You now go on to take face right readings at stations Y and X. When you have done this, you will have a round of angles. That is, a set of face left readings and a set of face right readings. However, everybody makes mistakes, so it's normal practice to take at least two rounds of angles. You take them on independent parts of the horizontal circle, so you finish with independent sets of observations. For the second round, set the horizontal circle to give a reading between 90 and 91 degrees and perform a complete set of measurements. Compare the results with the first round. If you get agreement to within plus or minus 40 seconds for a 20 second theodolite, you use the mean values of the angles for your calculations. 
If you don't get a good enough agreement, do a third round, setting the horizontal circle to between 180 and 181 degrees. A fourth round would have an initial reading between 270 and 271. This then completes the procedure for measuring horizontal angles. Take vertical angles after horizontal ones in order to avoid confusion when you book readings. You read them from the vertical circle on the theodolite, which is situated at one end of the trunnion axis. When you measure vertical angles, the target for sighting can take several forms. For example, you can use an elastic band placed on a ranging rod at the same height as the trunnion axis above the theodolite station. This would be suitable for slope correction work, and the diagram shows you how the angles are calculated. Set the theodolite in the face left position. Sight the telescope, as you have done before, and line it up, remembering to check for parallax. You set the horizontal hair through the target at station X. It isn't necessary to use the exact intersection of the crosshairs, as we've done here, but you should use roughly the same point on the horizontal hair each time. Now align the altitude bubble with the altitude level setting screw. When the bubble is in the middle of its run, the vertical circle is correctly orientated. Use the micrometer screw to take a reading. This reads 1 degree, 43 minutes, 20 seconds. And you obtain it by adding the vertical circle scale to the micrometer scale. Book the reading and then check it again. Now transit the telescope and repeat the whole procedure for the same station, but this time on face right. This is done to eliminate any errors which might be caused by the altitude level being out of adjustment. Unlike horizontal angles, it is only possible to take one round of vertical angles, that is, face left and face right. The mean of the two values is used. You then repeat the procedure for any other stations to which vertical angles are required, in this case, to station Y and to station Z. Don't start packing up until you're happy with the results. It's essential to take additional readings if you're not sure. While the theodolite is still on the tripod, close the mirror and put the telescopes in a vertical position. Align the theodolite as it was when you took it out of the box. This one has spots of paint as index marks to help you. Slide the theodolite horizontally back into the center and bring the foot screws to the middle of their runs. Now unclamp the upper plate. Keep hold of the theodolite with one hand and unscrew it with the other. Do up the clamps again and put the theodolite back into its box. The reason you opened the box earlier is so that you don't have to put the theodolite on the ground in order to open the box now. Slacken the wing nuts on the tripod. Undo the screws on the adjustable legs and collapse them to their shortest length. Do up the screws again, but only lightly.
you can now move the theodolite and the tripod to the next station. If you need to sight this station from the next one, put a ranging rod by the station to help you to find it.